All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the trade findings and adjustments for the 9th of September. I believe today is Thursday. I am in the Rawlings, Wyoming area. We'll be in Cheyenne around lunchtime, have a dinner scheduled in Denver. I'm just going across the Western United States. For those of you that are back east, I will definitely get to you here eventually when we get some better news from COVID, um, not to mention Jim. I'm going to hold Jim and Rich available so we can go get some uh, get some fishing in down there on his lake. Can't wait to get there. With that said, I want to spend probably 20 to 30 minutes with you today because I've got a lot of people asking what the risks are September, October. And also a lot of you asked to go over my pricing where I keep saying the pricing Apparently, when I showed you Baidu a couple weeks ago and Disney a couple months ago, some people wanted me to go over that same pricing and, and justify Apple. So here's what I'm going to do. Let's go through those things today to teach you guys what I'm going to be doing and what Keeve and I spend hours upon hours upon hours of doing when we're sitting here doing our research. I mean, a lot of people, let's face it. A lot of people sit on their computer and play solitaire in the office. Uh, I'm pretty sure my computer does not have solitaire on it because I'm not allowed to play that game <laughs> when I'm working and doing something. It just doesn't help. So interesting article came up today. I actually hit four of these six points and I, I'm going to give Jim Cramer some credit even though I don't like to. Jim Cramer very easily said, here's the six concerns for the stock market falling in September. I'm gonna tell you it's September, October. We just go through that range. But his six reasons were negative pre-announcements. I did not have this one on my list, but apparently paint makers and home builders and in all reality, there are more than just three. There were three this week. There have been quite a few of pre-announcements that have been negative and they all relate to supply chain. So supply chains are bottlenecking and not coming in. Earnings are not going to be as good as we expect it to, which when we go through our earnings event uh, in October, it might dampen a Christmas rally as, as we run into the end of the year. So I did not have negative uh, pre-announcements, but that is a definite risk in our market. That's why Keeve and I are spending the extra time really soaking up as much information as we can to get ahead of a drop in our stock market. With that said, we're also fighting the strength of the dollar. We're, we're printing a dollar so anyone can use them. There's a lot of, there's a lot of inflation risk. Well, let me go to that in a minute. Uh, the Fed, obviously the Fed was worried about inflation pressures, raising rates. That was on my list. I expected that higher rates obviously you don't have a booming economy with higher rates it makes uh, dividend yielding stocks go down it makes stocks in general go down when the price of business goes up with higher interest rates for businesses to borrow and to buy earnings go down it's a simple simple um calculation to justify why our market might not do well in September, October. Number four, Congress. I did not have this in my worries. This was the second one that I did not have to hear that Congress, uh, well, I, I had it as a positive. I thought a stimulus bill would get passed. My Congress worry was on taxes and that would have been number seven, an increase in taxes. So maybe I did have Congresses on, on my reasons that we could have a bad September, uh, um, October's timeframe. The man my host said it's a bit of a double-edged sword. Could they supercharge the economy by getting workers back to work and the stimulus package? At the same time, could they kill it by the fact that they want to raise taxes? So pretty interesting there. Uh, number five with a fresh supply of stocks, there's not so many IPOs that are happening right now. Again, that was a worry. 
I consider it as a positive because it means we can only buy and sell the current stocks that we have. We won't see some dilution of people selling stuff in the stock market to buy a new company that's going public. It's uh, I kind of view this as a positive. Geopolitical worries, uh, obviously China and what they're doing, uh, the war in Afghanistan and how we blundered that one. There's always a geopolitical worry that could flare up somewhere in the world that would obviously hurt stock markets in general. And the other one that's not on here that I would expect to be on here would just be uh, history. The cycle of history on how September and October, the first and third worst months in the typically in the, uh, in the stock market throughout the year, it's just a historical pattern. So there are some concerns and worries coming up that we need to pay attention to for a downturn in September, October. The big one is the, the next earning cycle that happens there in October. We want to see that kind of be positive with some positive raising of guidance numbers into Christmas so that we can get our Christmas rally and run in through the end of the year. Uh, there's also another item that was here that was on my list that maybe we're worried about the fact that the stock market or the market has run hot year to date already. Typically, you need some type of selling or pullback. So I might as well just go ahead and just go ahead and copy this one and throw a couple other ones in here so that we can have that list and, and, and see it. Uh, we said geopolitical worries. Let's change that to 7. Dot historical um, patterns. And I should put in here Kevin's <laughs> other reasons, right? So historical patterns. I kind of like things all done my way. So give me a quick second. Zero, zero. Number eight would be rising taxes that I don't have in here. And man, I am just not spelling well at all. And number nine, come on. Okay, I'll do it this way. Number nine, earnings season in October. So those are just uh, some reasons or some things that I see that are what we need to look out for in the near future. In the future when we see the stock market falling. So I received no less than three and <laughs> and no more than 100 emails regarding how we fairly value the stocks we look at. And again, this goes back to, and of course, <laughs> no, Richard, uh, I did not get 100 emails. And Randy, of course, not. I did not get 100 emails. I'm just trying to make a joke here. I got three. All right, I got three emails from you guys. But recently, recently, I went over Disney and Baidu. And a couple of you asked, can I go over fair value pricing for Apple. Anyone remember where I think my fair value pricing for Apple should be?
Anyone remember where I told you Apple should be in, in generals, general terms? There you go, perfect. And you're correct, but uh, mostly correct. 185 to 202. And I, I gave a range there. I gave a range because in all honesty, we certain things change, there's some standard deviation but yes i gave a range on where apple could be so that then i'm not trying to pinpoint an exact dollar i just want to know where a fair value is on for apple and where it can get to so when you think of apple uh what is apple's bread and butter so really if you're thinking about apple where's apple's bread and butter what do they do what what are you looking at for apple that you would think okay this is their bread and butter this is what you need to pay attention to this is what they do okay perfect right iphones so they're in the iPhone industry, computers, and computers, I'm gonna put iPads in there as well. Those are two great answers, what else? Or is that all you think Apple's in? Because it's funny, I mean, that would be the first two that I would think of as well, right? Hey, if you think of Apple, it's iPhones, it's computers, that's their bread and butter. And, uh, you know, four of you just typed in iPhones and probably 10 of you are typing in computers. Yeah, I see them. What, el what else, though? Because you are correct. That is their bread and butter. But there is so much more. In fact, I'm going to put it there. I'm going to say we don't think about these items. And that is fair, but there you go, services. And services is equal to iTunes. It's equal to games. Services is equal to iCloud storage. We don't think about some of these other things that they have here. We're looking at movies or entertainment. Don't forget artificial intelligence, self-driving cars, chips. motherboards software they have their iso system which is funny because you should say ios uh, gpu software is one of their big bread and butters it kind of started the iphones and the computers and the ipads and there's some things there that we forget about. We forget about it, and when we forget about it, we uh, we don't properly evaluate a price target on Apple. So it's interesting because a, a couple of you said, "Okay, well let's let's take a look and let's go Apple." I'm going to shrink this down a little bit. And so Apple right now making it so I can do everything that I want to do here. Okay, so let's look at a proper 
valuation on Apple. And the interesting there is proper, you can't take someone else's numbers and say, hey, Jim Cramer said Apple should be at 180, 165. You can't just look at these numbers over here on the right and say, well, Wolf says 155, JP Morgan says 180. Uh, Wolf actually said 135 previously. So here are these guys in three months have no clue and keep raising their Apple numbers because their calculations suck. You can't say, well, it's Fargo 165. Piper Sandler, 165. Oppenheimer's a good one. Morgan Stanley's normally a good one. They're coming up with all kinds of different numbers at all kinds of different parts and plays, and it's just, it's ridiculous. You don't know what you don't know, so to go trust someone else that doesn't know what they don't know, ooh, that's not a good idea. If you don't know what you don't know, and you're gonna trust someone else that doesn't know what you don't know and what they don't know, you're going to run into a problem. This is why you need to do your own research and find out where you're gonna be. All right, typical way of doing it. You take your forward or current PE, depending which one you wanna go with, with your earnings for next year. So if I was to take those numbers, it looks like what? It looks like it's going to be 30.38 times 5.66. Let's find a fair value for the future earnings on Apple. So we have what? Current PE, which is higher than the future PE. So apparently Apple is going to make less money going into the future. I call bullcrap on that one, right? times future earnings, which are at $5.66. You multiply those out. I'm gonna get my calculator up. Let's do 30.38 times 5.66. And that comes out to $171.95. So those are pretty standard numbers that you're going to notice all of these jokers fall into. Well, Kevin, are you calling Morgan Stanley, JP Morgan, Morgan, JP Morgan UBS, Barclays, Deutsche Bank, Oppenheimer, Piper Sandler, Wells Fargo? Are you calling them all jokers? Well, if they're analysts, yeah, they're jokers. They're not smart, they're idiots. Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. We buy into this and we should look. JP Morgan, 160 to 175. The next week, 170 to 175, 165 to 170, 170 to 175. They don't know what they're doing. JP Morgan, 175 to 180. These are so supposed to be yearly estimates. So when I see JP Morgan raise it three times in a COVID world, I don't think they know what they're doing. When I see anyone that's on here more than twice, well, twice or more, Wells Fargo, Morgan Stanley's on here three times it cuts down their credibility because they couldn't make a yearly estimate right the first time. Now, yes, I understand things change, but that doesn't allow someone to change a yearly estimate because things change. You're supposed to calculate it. That's why a range is usually helpful. That's why I put it in a range. So I look at Apple and I'm just gonna say, you know what, if I think of Apple, I think of FANG stocks. I think of FANG stocks. I want to see what these FANG stocks are going to be. 
So my first FANG stock is probably Microsoft that I think comes closest to what Apple PEs could be. And when I look at Microsoft, I see Microsoft PEs that we just looked at that are going to be uh, 37.27. And then the forward one is actually, it's also down 29.91. Uh, I should say Apple's PE, Apple's PE right now is at 30.38 and a forward PE sits down at 27.39. So if you compare PEs to Apple, to Microsoft, apples to Microsoft, not apples to oranges, Apple to Microsoft. They seem relatively in line, but Microsoft has a higher PE than Apple. I don't understand that. I, I really don't understand that. It doesn't make sense. Parity PE ratios to find the Apple PE ratio and justify the PE we are going to use. Someone please tell me income is only 61 billion, sales are only 168 billion. I mean, Apple's twice the size. Book value, cash on hand, debt to equity is much worse. How does Microsoft have a better PE and growth opportunity than Apple? Look at these numbers. Look at the sales. Look at the income. It's huge. It's night and day difference. Yet Microsoft has a higher PE. Um, when I think of computers, I would probably do Hewlett Packard because they're one of the bigger ones. And we look at the Hewlett Packard PE of 8.74 and 4 to 7.43, negative book value. Eww. So maybe it's not the best one to choose, but when I look at Hewlett Packard, Hewlett Packard's PEs are way lower than Apple's. I can probably justify why it's so low, but I'm going to throw Hewlett Packard out of, of who I would look to for computers because Hewlett Packard obviously has some problems that Apple doesn't have. Uh, let's go ahead and let's look at Dell. I think Dell is a similar computer maker. There we go. A 19 poor PE, a 19.56 current PE with a Ford P of 10. That also is kind of low. That uh, that doesn't look like a good PE for Dell, or at least for computer factory or manufacturers. So maybe computer prices are going down. Microsoft is more computers and software. That seems to be more in line. Um, out of curiosity, let's go to Western Digital. Let's go to Western Digital Corp. Because Apple is obviously making their own chips now. That's the area that they're going to go into, right? Western Digital Corp. This is Samsung. These are the chip makers. P of 22 with a Ford P of 5.04. Ooh, 22.11 and a P of 5.04. Uh, let's do Micron. They are a chip maker. Come on, let's go to Micron. Micron PE, 19.95, 6.64. So if you're a chip maker, 
you're not going to make, uh, I guess, a whole lot of money into the near future. Um, let's check out Intel. I, I'd like to check out Intel and see where they might be. That's a chip maker, right? New area of business, got to pay attention to it. Uh, 11.92, but the 4P is now at 12.06. Uh, I think that kind of speaks volumes. I don't understand it yet, but again, I don't necessarily need to understand everything here. I'm just trying to get an idea of where a PE ratio could be. But apparently Intel is going to make better chips and so forth than the than the uh, Western Digital Micron. Um, I don't know. I, I don't get it. I want to go ahead. Let's go to NVIDIA. I think NVIDIA is a great comparison for chip makers, for screens, for artificial intelligence. <laughs> A P of 79.81, a Ford P of 48, which would mean obviously um, Apple is way undervalued if you take an NVIDIA PE, which is interesting because I think that's the area that Apple is trying to get into. All their own chips, all their own computers, um, their own games, their own artificial intelligence. I think NVIDIA is maybe a better PE competitor, competitor than Intel, Micron, Western Digital, Dell, Hewlett Packard. Microsoft, I think, is also a good comparison. Uh, they're getting into movies, right? Let's go Netflix. Let's look at Netflix PE. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm just pulling out my Ford PE and the PEs right here as I keep going through all these. Uh, Netflix, if you're going to compare someone to their movie system, right? Netflix and what was my Netflix? I just saw it. Netflix was uh, the 64.11. And I actually forgot what the forward one is. Uh, 47.26. So 47.26. Okay, that seems more in line. If I was going to do movies, I'd probably do Disney because they're in that space. They're the up and coming one. They're the one that I think has more potential than Apple even. Disney... PE is 295 with 4P of 36. Holy crap. That is unbelievable. But again, I don't know. I, I For Disney, I'm going to pay more attention to the 36.48. There's awfully a calculation that could be wrong there. Um, I'm going to stick Roku in here because it's just a provider and Disney might be, uh, Apple might be like Roku and just provide some software to watch it. You know, the Apple box, holy crap, Roku PE, 198.72 and the forward PE was 203, 203.55. Um, phone guy, I want to go T-Mobile. T-Mobile is kind of the biggest one. I don't want to go AT&T. T-Mobile seems to have the biggest, uh, new phones coming out. PE 42 and 38.05. So he, all I've done is I've just tried to pick out some competitors to, um, to do the best I can in finding a comparison for Apple. 
so with all this info what would you choose for apple's pe a little bit hard to do huh with all this information what would apple's forward pe be what would you choose for the forward pe for apple Someone tell me what it's going to be. I'm going to calculate the rest of this here. Give me a quick second. I need 10 minutes, so come back in 10 minutes. Cool. All right, so what would your Ford PE be? A uh, 100 doesn't cut it. I'm looking for more than that. If you're looking at this information, I'll be honest with you, I'm going to fall somewhere in here. Uh, I'm going to fall somewhere in here, somewhere in here, somewhere in here. What would you give me for the forward PE for Apple and its earnings? And we came up with the $5.66 is next year's Ford projected earnings. Yeah, I, 100, I'm not going to take, Randy. 100 isn't applicable. You can't look at Roku. You can't look at Disney's. It's outside of the standard deviation. Also, that's why I wouldn't put Hewlett Packard, Dell, um, in all honesty, I would double all those. If I was looking at just as a computer store, Apple does at least twice as well as these guys. I'd have to double all those, which would put it at like 17, 40, and 44. So give me some ideas. Keith, what do you think? Keith's here today. Keith, what do you think? I mean, if I was looking at computer stuff, I'd probably have to go more with NVIDIA. But NVIDIA seems a little high, too. All right, there we go. I see some. So someone said 34, and I'm pretty sure that's what we used last time. So if we start at 34 on the low range, 34 times 5.66. Actually, I think we used 32 last time. 32 times 5.66. We did. Last time we used 32. And 32 is on the low range that gave us a dollar figure where I told you, hey, 181.12. I'm just going to copy this a couple different times because we're truly looking for a range, right? If we did 34, I'm going to take a 34 times 5.66. 34 times 5.66. That gives us uh, a price target of 192.2. Four, four. And more importantly, on the high end, I would probably go to a 38. No more than a 38. And if we did 38 times 5.66, we get 215.08. That's how we're calculating a range for Apple. 181, I'm going to push that to 185. 215 seemed a little on the high side. I'd push that down to 205. So Hurley Investments comes up with a future price target range of 
185 to 205. And that's how Keeve and I have done our research to say, hey, Apple's undervalued. Apple's undervalued. We see upside opportunity. This is exactly what we were trying to show you with Baidu a couple of weeks ago. It's what we were trying to show you with Disney a couple months ago. This is the research that we're doing, and we're doing it on a pretty consistent basis to justify why we have your money, why we have our money in certain stocks. Are there any questions you guys have? Are there any questions you guys have that I can answer for you that might justify why we look and do the research that we do? Uh, two comments just came in. <laughs> Kevin, how much time do you and Keith spend doing this? We do it all the time. And uh, Keith actually just put a great comment. Uh, mostly because none of these comps are so broad in other industries. Yeah. So another good comment that with Kiva saying Apple is so broad in so many different industries, you need to have a range because it's not computers. It's not iPhones. It's not software. It's not iCloud storage. It's not games. It's not music. You know, another one we didn't put in here. It's not finance finance which they're also moving into so we need that range and it is kind of broad because apples in so many different industries that's why you have to do this type of research and even with just doing this down and dirty with you guys today uh i didn't have the finances in here we probably should throw some finances in here to look at those and to see how things are coming for those compared to apple but there's our research, that's what we do. Uh, any other questions or comments you guys have? I'm gonna say I'm appreciative that you guys are paying attention, that you're watching these videos, that uh, great questions. Again, three emails, right? I had no less than three, no more than 100 <laughs> emails for people calling and asking me about, hey, how did you guys do that? How did you guys figure that out? How are you coming up with this? Those are all great questions. So we appreciate you guys fact checking us, right? Fact checking, making sure we're doing what we're doing, having us justify to you. Guys, this is the work that we do and we do it on a constant basis. When we're bored, we're not jumping on stupid solitaire, we're crunching numbers. We have yellow pads of paper full of just crunching these numbers to justify what we want to tell you guys. So we have actual real numbers to, to show you with actual calculations, which is believing someone else's BS. That has to end. And in our industry, blindly following the idiots has got to stop sometime. We're appreciative to have your business. Even with all of our calculations, this year we're behind the market. I don't think we'll finish behind the market. I think a lot of our stocks that have been dogs this year will come up to be much higher, and you're really gonna enjoy your returns through November and December as we catch up, if not beat the market this year. Guys, I see no more questions coming in. I appreciate your time. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing you guys next Monday. And with that, have a great weekend, and we'll look forward to seeing you next Monday. Bye-bye. <laughs>